features um, uh, two guitars and two cellos. Uh, so that's Jima's um, sort of uh, favorite track. Um, the one I like is probably the uh, Church of Three Heroes, sort of like the, wow. the final sort of boss track or yes. battle track that we have on the on the currently released soundtrack, and that's just because it's, it's massive. <laughs> yeah, you're right, it's got some sound. Yeah, we got some church organs and rock orchestra, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of, of tracks, uh, how do the tracks get names? Because I've seen some of the production where it's, <laughs> You know this scene, or like this working title, but then the final final titles for the tracks get uh, created. But some of them uh, seem like interesting choices. For yeah, <laughs> I'm working on that. Uh, <laughs> so I'll give, so right now on the current projects that I'm working on, I've actually started using title tracks as an aesthetic before I've actually sort of completed the track. So the idea of uh, like almost writing a track around. Um, like a named concept has been like quite an interesting thing to explore. With Shield Hero, <laughs> uh, it was not the case. It was more like, okay, I, I know this track is music one or music twenty five or you know music thirty seven. So now I need to fold that into something that's related to the story. And watching the anime kind of helps with that. So you can see how how the music is used in context. Um, moving forward, um, yeah, I, I think. Well, for example, Kansas, um, that was a reference to you're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. Like, that's it. Like, so, you know, and it's because he's just literally just, and when the music is played, he's just moved to sort of Megalomark. He's just been transported there. And so I thought that was kind of a touching, not a touching, that's a bit, of, that's a bit much, but um, <laughs> that's a stretch. But um, it, it, I, it, was, it was quite appropriate, I thought. Um, so those sorts of titles I'll, I'll look into. And some of them are, are literally just... Um, you know, Church of Three Heroes. You know, it just—it's it, a literal reference to the uh, t to the story. Uh, who's next? My next. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, was there a piece of music that you were like, oh, "This doesn't fit," but, I, or maybe you needed to rework or go back to? Or was there? I mean, I mean. That's definitely um, an issue with timeline. Um, so, in the case of Shield Hero, we had a quite a long production period. Uh, I was working on the soundtrack from June of 2017 or July of 2017 until probably about October, November of 2018. That's a pretty long time for a music sort of for a music uh, sort of schedule. Normally, it's done maximum six months. Um, so we did actually have a little bit of time to sort of let breathe the, uh, the soundtrack, sort of let the soundtrack breathe, and then uh, sort of if we wanted to go back and we could kind of rework some things. A lot of the reworking, a lot of the things that we try and improve, normally uh, normally to do with production quality, um, making sure that you know, not just on the mixing process, but maybe the uh, the recording process with certain instruments, certain extra instruments. We had a bit of a policy on Shield Hero that. Uh, we would try and get a live instrument in every single track. Because obviously it's a really, really big track and you've got to kind of pick your battles budget-wise. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, making sure that at least every track had something live in it was sort of a little, a little goal of ours this time. Okay, so hi, Minimap Media. <clears throat> so it sounds like you actually have a flair, uh, a love of actually liking actual music, not just pre-recorded tracks. So would you say you want to kind of get in the current trend right now in Japan where you have a rock opera? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, in the past, or well, was uh, my ideas that the symphonic rock and metal thing, it's a bit of a, that more adjustment uh, is uh, animation directors. Uh, I I had uh, the ideas. I just meant you, so uh, tell tell him yes ideas for yes. And finally, it's that so formal ideas so can make it. Yeah. Um, every project has a very very distinct approach, or at least you know trying to. <laughs> and um, and so for example, with Shield Hero, there was a a, a pretty. Um, sort of explicit conversation about wanting to have um, symphonic rock, a Spanish influence, 
uh, with the flamenco guitar and um, certain other sort of JRPG influences or choral influences. Um, that will that set of styles will be completely and utterly different to other works that I'm, that I'm currently doing or have worked on in the past. So, yeah, with Shield Hero, probably continue that sort of approach, uh, but um, just got to make sure it's good. <laughs> yeah. All right. My turn again. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you mentioned that you sort of work with a lot of different styles, but do you ever find yourself gravitating towards sort of like a central theme or way of writing across your different works? Like, do you ever see any like crossover between them? Other people hear it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I do become a, a little nose deaf to, to sort of, you know, how every soundtrack's related to each other. The, the f um, sort of the, the through line is, uh, that, I, that I personally see between soundtrack to soundtrack is actually the, um, the uh, sort of almost like the, the equation that I use to derive styles from uh, the show. Um, if I was to give like two examples to show what I, what I see as similarities, um, Made in the Abyss, for example, uh, features a small amount of characters in a very, very big space. So the idea of recording a small amount of musicians in a big space makes a lot of sonic sense to me. So that would be sort of almost like a mathematical parameter that I would then try, try and distill down into into the musical approach or mu you know, a musical style or you know some sort of textural sort of nod. Um, Shield Hero, obviously, as I mentioned before, JRPG influences. Uh, there's a lot of uh, spirituality or quasi spirituality in in, in um, Shield Hero, so making references to um, spiritual music of the uh, Baroque or class excuse me classical era, again just sort of makes sense in terms of trying to essentially physically represent in music um, what what's happening uh, in terms of the setting or the character design or or the story. Um, so that's the, the 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 through line that I see. It's, the actual writing of it, I don't know, I, I, I use a lot, of, a lot of minor chords, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Sorry, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that you wanted to have like a live instrument uh, in every track. Was there any like particular instrumentation you were drawn to for Shield Hero? I think the acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a very, the sound is amazing. Like uh, so, it's, uh, not playing the synthesizers. It's more more lively, so important it's mm -hmm. instrumental. Yeah, yeah, live acoustic guitar. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. Oh. Um, in the dub and the sub, um, there were different vocalists um, oh. for for one track in the beginning of the series. There. Yeah. Um, what was the the sort of process of Coming to that decision to do so and executing on it. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, falling through starlight. Uh, through starlight. Uh, sorry, I've only had one coffee this morning. <laughs> falling through starlight uh, is the track you're referring to. Um, I've never done that before. Like normally, it's just been like the one singer and that's it. Uh, sort of the interesting approach with Shield here is that they they, they made a very conscious effort to, to try and make the show more international. Uh, so the idea of being able to essentially like specialize, uh, depending on region, having different vocalists. Yes. And there, um, so uh, Amelia Jones and Asami Seto are the two vocalists. Um, Asami Seto also being the, the Japanese voice ca uh, actor for yeah. for Rough Talia. Um, they have inherently completely different voices. So it's almost like giving a completely different shade mm -hmm. to the same sort of drawing. Um, so that, that that was an interesting experiment because I I took care of the English recording and Jima took care of the Japanese in recording. Japan. Yeah, in Japan. So I, yeah, I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> so I think they uh, it tried it uh, overseas international deliveries. I think they so first uh, Kevin Penkins make it as uh, opera songs. So uh, so original ideas very important, so keep it uh, respect. So it's uh, Amara Jones' vocal. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, so as a side, it's Japan scenes and voice actors so into the uh, singing performers, mm -hmm. so important. So I think it changed the, 
separate into the regions. Yeah. How did you get started at Kinema Citrus in the first place? Yeah, why did I remember? Uh, um, so I come from games, uh, and uh, I started writing uh, game music in oh God, 2011, I think. And I was actually with um, Nobuo Uematsu back in the day on on sort of uh, a few games that came out in Japan. One of them was actually a game called Nor Nine, which turned out to become an anime. Uh, and it just so happens that Kinema Citrus, who I was working with at the time on a Kickstarter anime called Under the Dog, uh -huh. were also working on an anime adaption of Nord 9, which I just so happened to have written uh, at, in get, as a game a couple of years prior to that. So I have no idea what black magic was coming from that, but I'm glad it happened because like, doing Under the Dog and doing Nord 9, the first, these first two projects, sort of they were contained enough that I could sort of cut my teeth a little bit and kind of get used to the, the sort of the, the different intricacies of writing for anime versus uh -huh. games, which is the only thing that I knew at the time. And so that sort of paved the way pretty well for um, going into Maiden of this and then sort of moving forward with other projects as well. Oh, I'm next. Um, <laughs> no, you're next. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, could you tell us a bit more about the exact process of uh, creating these individual songs for adapted to different scenes? Um, are you given like a sort of set of criteria, such as, oh, we want this sort of emotion evoked, or are you given the uh, details of the scene beforehand? Yeah. Yes, it's, a, it's a, uh, in the case of the Shield of Heroes, it's getting the sound of directors in the former orders to make it a six, uh, 16th, 16 songs. Yeah, so we had a formal, initial formal request of 16 tracks. 16 tracks, yeah. So I adjusted for e, uh, separate jammings, uh, so ordinary songs or battle songs or uh, character songs. I I put on the description and ex, ex, uh, me, explain the writing the uh, more uh, assisted for Kim Becky to make it, yes. Yeah, so you basically get a big Excel file um, it's basically saying, you know, we need track 1 to 16 and track 1 to 5 is going to be main themes, tracks, you know, 6 to 10 are going to be ordinary songs. So they're split into different genres, they give it different descriptions, and so basically descriptions and reference images, etc. You then start writing out the soundtrack based, based on that blueprint. Uh, my question, Kevin, you answered this once uh, back at Crunchyroll Expo, but I'm going to ask you again, and I'm also going to ask uh, you one. Favorite character from the show and why? I, 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 I get Vittoria. Mm -hmm. Vittoria is the uh, Queens. Yeah, it's both is, uh, each one is uh, really uh, legendary voice actors. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. What answer did I give at Crunchyroll? Uh, now for me. Yeah, well, there we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now for me. Right. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Is there ever a, a change between um, when you do the subtitles and the dub within the music where you have to go, oh, well, we have to change this um, pattern or anything like that? The only. Um, Clear example was the aforementioned sort of song where we had, um, uh, you know, an English and a Japanese version. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any sort of radical sort of recuts or anything like that of the music going from version to version. I think that sort of made it sort of the, for lack of a better description, executive level. And then uh, the, the the dub doesn't change that too much. Mm -hmm. I would be curious to go back and see if the volume levels have changed depending on the dub. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I'm curious about. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, people can tend to ask you often, what's your favorite track or what's this, sorry, uh, the favorite thing Basically. you've worked on? <laughs> <laughs> kind of has some Foley sound. Yeah. Um, so are there any tracks that you've worked on that you kind of regret, but it's in there, you can't get rid of it, and it's not terrible, but to you, it's every time you hear it, you're like, ah, oh, why'd I do this? So I have a pretty bad relationship with control. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm quite a control freak, and so if, if there's something that I hear that 
legit, like seriously for whom no one else will hear or ever care about. Um, but you know that there is that sort of um, hopefully on the healthy side of perfectionism, but there is that perfectionist sort of approach to a lot of things, uh, no matter how little, for lack of a better word, insignificant the song may be in the grand scheme of things. Um, but you hear it, and, and you know that 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 little that little part of your brain is just saying like, it could have been different. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, I think something really important when it comes to that because a the project is massive, or b the t the, t uh, the deadlines are tight, or c um, you know, actually no, that, those are two big ones. <laughs> or you've run out of money. <laughs> um, you you kind of got to pick your battles, and I think trying to make peace with that. It, it, it's a slightly healthier approach because if you obsess about every single track to the point where you make yourself sick, it's it's not fun. <laughs> it's back to me here. All right. So uh, you mentioned earlier that you got a certain amount of requests for for the formal request for a certain amount of tracks, and I believe at the Made in Abyss panel yesterday you mentioned that you actually started working on it before you got the formal request. <laughs> so were there any like What's sort of the difference between working the, on those two different ends? Um, with Abyss, actually, there's a, there's a couple. Of, actually, I'm going to give um, yeah, I'm going to give like a contrasting example. Um, so, Made in Abyss, because I hadn't done anything like that, like sort of slightly more experimental, and, and had like the opportunity to do that sort of thing before, it was very cathartic to be able to basically put all the sort of early influences sort of from, from sort of experimental music college days into into anime music. So that was almost just like a almost felt like a bit of a return to form. And so I could just kind of write freely and it just so happened that it worked really, really well. I mean obviously you'd be targeted to work that way, but um, Shield Hero, like you said, completely mapped out already. And then there's a, another project that I'm working on right now which I can't mention, but uh, just from, from a creative standpoint, it was a similar situation where we were able to suggest music that we think that would work really well for that project. The problem is that I now have the experience of doing both sort of con like both of those projects before. So having to essentially try and one up yourself in, in terms of doing like crazy shit, um, that was that's where I started going to the bathroom a little bit more. <laughs> cold and going to bed in cold sweats. <laughs> um, so uh, they they both have their challenges. Uh, Shield Hero had a you know a rigid approach to writing the music, which is very comforting and it just allows you to sort of be able to very clearly map out in your head. You know, I'm gonna you know, I need to do this track. It needs to sound like this and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. If you're doing Abyss or the other aforementioned secret project. Um, when you're kind of given a blank canvas, that's both the most exciting and terrifying time of the process mm -hmm. until you finish it. That's great. <laughs> Hope that answers your question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned how long the production process for the music was for Shield Hero. Um, can you talk about like the access to the story material and stuff that you had as, throughout that process, and any challenges there were in maybe like only having a feel to go off of? Yeah. Yeah, at first time uh, it, uh, it's novels, it's mangas. I just read it. The, uh, it's main. Uh, I read it. The main themes. Uh, so again, so it's fun. Uh, now for me, it's, uh, yeah, right it. Yeah. Um, so Ichiban San and I will work quite closely together um, to sort of determine. Um, you know what the music should sound like. So there's a very close and regular conversation that we have regarding that. Um, so for the upcoming Bondru film, um, is so what is the, the process going from composing for the TV series to now going to composing for a film in that same franchise? Um, so. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to figure yeah, I'm not sure my footing here about right. what I should, yeah, should right. say. No, sure. um, it's now on progress. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're currently in yeah. progress right now. Yes. Um, I think when you're going from any uh, sort of pre-existing mm -hmm. series and you're doing a sequel, 
uh, being able to continue, uh, continue. It's not even quality control. It's about right. trying to, to develop that aesthetic that you've already sort of mm -hmm. established. Because as stories progress, I think so should the aesthetic. Right. Assuming that you know the, the, the story is taking a dark turn or something yeah. like that. So there is a, a gradual descent into li literal and metaphorical <laughs> descent into yeah. this from the music so, uh, side of things as well. But I'm not sure how specifically right. I can answer your question at no, this well, time. Yeah. 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 yeah, obviously uh, we try these new challenges mm -hmm. to make it now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're trying some shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry, this will be the actually the last question because we okay. need to have mm -hmm.